Hello, my name is Jim James and I am your host. I have been running my own companies for over 25 years now and on this podcast I like to share some thoughts and some tips and some technologies that business owners can use for building their own brand and communicating with their audiences. So today I'm going to share a little bit about live streaming. Now, I run a company called East West Public Relations, and we have offices in Singapore and China and the UK and partners all over the world. And on our weekly huddle that we had today, my team member in China talked about the growth of live streaming, live streaming for all manner of activities. And it seems to be that live streaming has really come into its own due to COVID. Now, It resonated for me, this comment from Charles Yang in Beijing, because earlier in the week I was speaking to the property agent uh, in London from my apartment, and he said that he had built a full 360 degree uh, online tour of the apartment that he's renting out on our behalf. Um, But the, the prospective tenants still wanted to come and see the apartment. Not only did the person come to see the apartment, but they actually then walked around the apartment and live streamed to the other person who was going to be renting the apartment with them. So live streaming now seems to be uh, certainly within the grasp of all of us that have got a smartphone. It's becoming cheaper and cheaper. The question is, how can it play a role in our public relations activities and in our sales? And it seems to me that speaking with Charles this morning, how in China they are already ahead of the game because what's happening now is that live streaming has been integrated into commerce. Platforms like Alibaba with their Taobao shopping uh, and WeChat with their online app stores are now enabling people to both find, to view and to purchase products and services of all manner and all sizes uh, in real time and online. And because the payment gateways are also incorporated into the mobile phones, for many people now, mobile shopping at the point of purchase is becoming like the old home shopping channels that were put on years ago by the QVC network, Barry Diller, if I remember rightly, who had seen the need and the desire for people to be at home and to view it and to buy it all from the comfort of their couch. So live streaming maybe is going back to where cable TV was 30 odd years ago. But what should we do with our own businesses, big and small, when it comes to live streaming? Now, Instagram and Facebook are, of course, two very popular social media apps. And that can make them the perfect place to live stream. And I'm going to go into a little bit of detail about each of these, plus some ones that you may never have heard of, and also to the concept of multicasting, that rather than just streaming your content just to one channel, with certain technologies now you can actually stream across multiple platforms, but beware, there are some challenges to that. If we first of all look at Instagram, which has got a demographic in the early 20s to maybe mid 20s, You can only go live using the mobile app on Instagram. So you can't go to Instagram on the desktop um, or on the browser and and stream. So it's very much an Android iOS native streaming app. Now, for many of us that use um, Instagram, one of the problems I personally find is the lack of sort of content around around the images. Now, the benefit, of course, of Twitter and Periscope as the platform for sharing your video online through Twitter is that you've already got your followers and you've already got a narrative that is talking to those people, whether it's your own tweets or tweets that you've taken and reposted. So Twitter has already our audience waiting for what we'd like to share. Um, But also the Periscope has a number of extra features. So it has the ability to basically replay the videos at any time. In other words, it's not just a a stream, it's actually recording and taking that as a video. So there are other integrated social features, of course, with Periscope. You can have people join or leave, people can leave emoticons and they can leave comments. So that's 
that's great. You can also set privacy so you can stop people coming in or out. Um, and you can also see who you're broadcasting to. So that's a nice way of live streaming to a dedicated group where you can actually have people be commenting and part of a community. Now, there are some um, comments, though. If you look on the iOS store, the comments are leading around two areas. One is that genuine accounts have been blocked for no particular reason. And people then are finding that the followers that they've got are no longer able to watch their content. And the other is that it's being hijacked by um, the underworld. So basically it's being used for pornography. Now that doesn't necessarily have to affect your own use, of course, of Periscope, but it may mean that as a corporate platform, it may or may not be what you want to use. Now there is another app called Livestream, which is also dedicated to mobile. Um, and it's only available in Android and iOS. And you can create films and they can be broadcast in, in HD as well, which is pretty amazing, especially with the new iPhones and Huawei's making 4K films. Of course, you need the bandwidth to be able to upload those, of course. So you can also then, with live stream, send your video by uh, connection through to Facebook or Twitter using your website. Again, looking at the reviews, live stream seems to uh, have a couple of comments. One is, again, it's being used by um, the underground for basically streaming uh, indecent images. Um, but also that whilst it says it's free, actually quite quickly one needs to pay some £70 a month uh, in order to use it. So um, there may or may not be some truth to that, but um, the the comments in the sections on the uh, app stores are saying that it's not quite what it should be. Now in China, of course, the big growth story has been the bite dance TikTok. Um, uh, and that is certainly something that is now creating a bit of a storm with these 15 second videos set to music. Of course, there's not much that one can say in 15 seconds, but from a branding point of view, it's good. But in China, the, the big one that's being used is Taobao for live streaming sales promotions. And people there are buying and watching and following. And there was a, a story recently uh, that came out about a, uh, a female streamer and she is um, the top e-commerce live streamer. Her name is Via. And on the 10th of October in 2019, she sold and get this 353 million RMB. So roughly $50 million worth of sales in one day. So in one day, she sold nearly $50 million worth of merchandise. She has 200 staff apparently. And she has become, if you like, the ultimate in sales demonstrators online. So China has already moved well beyond uh, what we've been doing, I think, in the UK and the US. There are other channels like Bigo, and there are a whole host of them on the App Store and the Android Play Store where you can start to stream content. The problem, of course, seems to be a couple of things. One is the company that you keep may not be so good. The second is the quality of the video. Now, there are, of course, some platforms that are professional and doing proprietary video. Now, video consumption online has jumped over 65% since 2018. So Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, all these big companies creating both their own technologies and owning the, the consumers. But there are companies like Vimeo who have uh, video platforms and Vimeo have created a Vimeo Enterprise uh, um, premium package, which enables you to stream your video across five multiple platforms. So users can stream through the Vimeo platform to five other dedicated platforms. Now, I thought this is quite interesting and I'll share with you why more is not necessarily better when it comes to video streaming. So with the Vimeo enterprise, you can also integrate both to Facebook and also to LinkedIn. 
And for that's, I think, for business to business, very interesting because LinkedIn, of course, is, you know, really the name, the only game in town if you're marketing yourself. And video in LinkedIn has really been growing in terms of traction. So I checked that out uh, to see how I could post my own videos on LinkedIn. It's not that everybody can do that. So what one has to do is to go to the uh, LinkedIn site. And the link is also on the Vimeo Enterprise pages. Um, and LinkedIn says that live video broadcasting is available for a limited number of members and LinkedIn pages. So what they've asked me to do is to fill out the form about how often I'm going to be live casting, what I'd be live casting about, and history of my company and my page. So obviously some human beings going through some fact checking to make sure that that platform is not hijacked. But I personally like the credibility that that creates for my content. Now, with the simulcasting on Vimeo, we can also connect our YouTube accounts, for example, uh, and also we can integrate some custom um, syndication of content to Twitch uh, and Periscope, Twitch being the sort of more consumer level playing field for, for video. So you can also, with the Vimeo, embed the Vimeo player into our own websites. Personally, I like that because it means that if I've got people coming to my website, then I can be streaming to those people. But if I've got product to be selling, merchandise on, on the page, for example, I could actually be showing people merchandise, uh, take, shaking them through, for example, the, the walkthrough of an apartment or showing them some bathroom fittings and furniture uh, and show them that on my website and actually lead them through to the shopping cart. Now, another alternative is a website called Restream.io, which allows us to broadcast live video to over 30 social networks. That's, I, I, you know, I have to say, I'm not a member of 30 social networks. But if I was, then I think I'd find this useful. Actually, I have a Restream account um, and we're looking at how we can use that. So for, this was founded... Um, by a couple of young men in 2015. It has a, an office in Ukraine and also in the US. So I think the founders were originally uh, Ukrainian. So they now say that they have some 200 million users worldwide. So it's become within five years, you know, a phenomenal success story, one that frankly none of us have maybe even heard of because it's not the end channel, but it's the carrier. There are some other softwares, for example, like ManyCam which enable us to stream to multiple platforms at the same time. And it's an encoding software that enables us to take the content from our phone or our cameras in our studio and pass them out to these other platforms. The, the thing to remember, of course, is that the more streams that we have, the more bandwidth we need from our production equipment. So we're going to need uh, a computer or a Mac with greater RAM for managing the different streams of video. And we're also going to need greater bandwidth for our internet connection. So it's not that we, we upload it once and all of the heavy lifting goes on to Restream or uh, ManyCam. Our own infrastructure has to have that kind of uh, capacity and bandwidth built in. Or all of those streams that go out will become choppy. The other thing to remember is that when we're casting out to all of these platforms, actually products like Vimeo uh, and another one called OBS, which is on a uh, um, uh, broadcast software, enable the chat to be in real time as well. Now, what that means is the chat is integrated from all of these different platforms. And if we have all of these different platforms answering maybe two, three, four hundred people sending in messages. We need to be set up for answering all of those questions or else we're going to create a bad user experience. Now, if we want to look at the two big games in town, which are really Facebook and YouTube. Now, Facebook is a great place to share live video, either directly through their own live stream or through someone like Restream. But remember that the people there aren't going there just to watch video. They're going there to do messaging, to post pictures and so on. So 
whilst we may have a community there and they're discussing things and they're sharing, uh, they're not necessarily going there to watch video. So a bit like they're in the in the front room of the house, the living room, the lounge, and the television's on, but they're also distracted by the newspaper, the book, the dog, the family, the friends. Now, YouTube is more like going to the cinema because people actually go to YouTube to watch video. Now, YouTube, of course, is also owned by Google, so the content on YouTube is catalogued and becomes search engine friendly, which of course is also very good for our SEO, for our search engine optimization. But on YouTube, we don't necessarily have fans or a community or a page because because it is to some degree a, a one trick pony. YouTube is where people go to watch video and then come off. So they spend less time there. So we have to think about if we're going to be on YouTube, how are you going to get the traffic? How are you going to get the people to come and watch what you're sharing if you're live streaming? So this is where both platforms, all platforms have their own inherent advantages because, of course, they're all slightly different. But Facebook is still the most popular social media platform in the world. Um, but what I personally like is this idea with LinkedIn that for business to business, I might be able to stream using Restream to my YouTube, to my Facebook, and also to my uh, LinkedIn. Assuming, of course, that the content is applicable across all platforms, which it, it may not be, because obviously one is a B2B community one is a consumer community, one may have a different age. And as we keep talking about with our different audience groups from the Speak PR module under personalization, we talk about the three groups of our internal audience, our partners and our external audience. And it's quite possible then to think about streaming, for example, content on your own website uh, or to your own community of followers. And that be one video channel and then to have an external one uh, to, for example, your Facebook community. So channelization, according to the different audience streams, can then be played out in terms of the amplification strategy. Which platforms do you send it to? Some announcements may be generic enough to go across all platforms to all people in, in a live manner. And some may be live for some people, maybe team meetings, for example, could be live, but in a closed chat room. So it's important to look at streaming because video now, of course, is a main platform and a main medium for everybody. There are many options. Choose one platform at a time. Choose to multicast. The main thing, of course, is to make sure that your content is still compelling and that it's relevant and that you can follow up. But as Via has shown by selling nearly $50 million worth of products in one day using one platform, mobile commerce and live streaming is definitely with us. In COVID times, it's even more with us and it's possibly a great way to build and drive sales. So thank you very much for listening to this episode of the Speak PR podcast. My name is Jim James. And if you like this content, please come to our website, eastwestpr.com and check out our website and newsletter or subscribe as well to this podcast. If you have time to rate it, I'd really appreciate it. In the meantime, until we meet again, I wish you good health, a profitable business and that you keep on communicating and possibly even live streaming.